our usual couple of light bulbs. Remind me, what are the two properties of the normal curve? Symmetrical and um, a max. And yeah, it's symmetrical. It raises, it, it increases to a maximum before it decreases back to a minimum. So, uh, anything that, that satisfies those two properties is at least approximately normal. If it also has those two inflection points, then it would have to be shaped like this. And this upper curve is, let me remind you, is the shape of the distribution. And we never lose sight of how, uh, depending on our, you know, depending on the circumstances, there could be a uh, underlying histogram. There could always be an underlying history. Like if we've taken, you know, a bunch of, uh, if, we, if I've got a sample and I've collected a bunch of information about that sample and made a frequency table, from that frequency table came a histogram, and then there's the shape to the shape of the distribution as the curve goes through the tops of the middles of all the bars. Well then, well then I'm going to do probabilities. I'm going to answer probability questions just with this smooth curve. I won't forget that there's that histogram underneath. Uh, what number is this? This is the number one. Precisely the number one. How is that the number one? Don't tell me anything about moving decimals. According to the area of the, of the shape of the distribution, that area, that space under the curve is supposed to be equal to that one. Have this in mind. That's where I'm going. Okay. But this is the definition of the percent symbol. These, these symbols, this two circles and that slash means that. It means that it means divide by 100 so then this just says 100 divide by 100 that's a fraction that has the same number on the top and the bottom it is the number one so then you have these two perspectives when we are looking at area under that normal curve on the one hand we can say well you know naturally Duh, it has 100% of the area underneath it. How much area is underneath the whole thing? 100%. But it, it's like, it, just mathematically, it is also the number one. The area under there, it's like one square unit, or 100% of the area. Either way, gets it done. So this is the area under the curve. And it does not matter, it does not matter what the mean is, and it does not matter what the standard deviation is. The shape of the curve will change so that depending on what your standard deviation is, the, the curve will get skinnier or get wider so that it can accommodate having an area of one underneath it. And the mean That'll just push it to the left or to the right. <clears throat> Our the standard normal curve, the standard normal curve is the one with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. This is the standard normal curve.
This axis is the Z axis. That's where the Z scores live. However, if, uh, well, I'll say it like this, in StatCrunch, uh, actually, let me say it like this. If the mean is different from zero, or the standard deviation is different from one, or we are using StatCrunch, then they don't call it the z-axis anymore. They just refer to it by this capital X. I'll distinguish my capital X as having this hat to choose. It's the capital X axis. <clears throat> Notation. Did you still need that? Were you still right? Thank you. Okay. Notation. This part is very important to get correct. the big picture, here's the big picture, our notation works like the probability of an event is equal to an area. The probability of an event will be equal to one of these areas under the curve. And because the areas under the curve only vary between zero and one, then this really will be a probability because probabilities must be between zero and one. <clears throat> the actual, uh, let me write down some events. Events will be looking like uh, X, greater than or equal to, I don't know, uh, 10, for example. Or maybe it's C less than one, less than 1.2, I'll say. The events that we'll be talking about refer to an arbitrary number from that horizontal axis and how it's either greater than or less than some other value. This is an arbitrarily selected Z value. The probability would be less than 1.2. So my event here, you can, you can see that this is an event when you would say, okay, this means that if I randomly selected somebody from my population, that their statistic that I'm talking about here is less than this number. That's it. All of our events will be uh, inequalities. And they're all less than or equal to or greater than or equal to for now. I'll give you one more. X less than or equal to one. So these are the types of events I could have my actual notation, what we will actually say. Big P for probability. I have my parentheses. That's where an event goes. So 
so maybe that event is that this is less than or equal to, I don't know, zero, zero point three, for example. <clears throat> this is the probability of an event So all of these symbols right here must be equal to an what? Domestic. Huh? Wait, it equal to or misleading? No. This this is the, uh, here's my event, and I'm talking about the probability of this event. It would be equal to an four letters. What was the big picture? Equal to an area. Huh? I was going to say one, and then you mm -hmm. said four letters, and now I'm slightly confused. Area, A R E A. Isn't that the 100% the area? Okay. Area is four letters. Yeah, this is equal to an area. And is that the same as saying 100%? Only if the area is 100%. Um, okay, so what if I said the probability that it's less than or equal to inf uh, infinity? That would be equal to one. Okay, good point. Depending on what part of the uh, area we're talking about. Right. Because this number here, whatever we choose for right there, is going to put a point on our horizontal axis. And if that number is way out here at infinity, then how much area is less than that point on the horizontal axis? Well, it's all of it, and that would be one. If I changed it to, uh, if I had, if I had, uh, if this was a z-score, so that the mean was zero and the standard deviation was one, and I said, what's the probability that it was less than or equal to zero? What would you say? Give me the number of the area. How much area would it be? Discuss it. What's 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 it going to be? It's going to be zero. None of the area is. There's no area. Here's zero. Here's the z-axis, right? There's zero. Tell me. I would think fifty percent. Fifty percent. You have half of the area to the left of this line. So we would get 0 0.5. Can I get clarification before we go too far? Yeah, 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 please. The uppercase X, uh -huh. what does that represent? Depends what, what the context of the situation okay, is. Right now it's just the if, if I'm saying, if, I, if I'm talking about um, uh, uh, blood pressures, and I discover that blood pressures are normally distributed, Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, well, and, and I am able to get the average blood pressure and the standard deviation. Mm -hmm. Then X represents some patients, some randomly selected patients' blood pressure. Mm -hmm. okay. The X is a is called a, a random variable. That part's not, not important, but, it, but it, it's called a random variable, and it's just related to your event. Here, we are just, it's, it's just math. We're just talking about numbers. For a normal distribution, remember, there's an underlying uh, histogram. So, I mean, we have an underlying uh, frequency table also. Look at how there's a whole, you know, the, the bars would be very tall right here in the middle. So, so way over here, the bars are very short. Envision me having a big list of numbers 
I have my raw data from which that histogram was constructed. And on my big list of numbers, there's gonna, be, there's gonna be some that are way down here that are negative, that are, that are less than negative three. There will be some on the list. But according to this picture, the majority of the numbers on my list are gonna be really close to zero, like between minus two and two. In fact, between minus two and two, you have what percentage of the area? Talk about this in a different way. 95%. Between minus two and two, you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at my list of numbers, and you know, it's a huge long list, thousands and thousands of numbers. And I'm like, dang, 95% of these numbers are between minus two and two. Every now and then there's one that's like three or four or ten. But most of them, 95% of them, are between minus two and two. Okay, great, so I've got this big list of numbers. I randomly select one of them. That's this guy. I randomly select one of them. And what was the probability that that number I randomly selected was less than zero? It's this. Because half of all the numbers were less than zero. Let's express this 95% um, actually, let me think. Uh, yeah, we can do this. Let's answer this question. These two questions. It's the probability of an event. So I know I'm going to get an area. On this first one, two is way over here. It's because it's a Z, so this is the standard normal curve. My mean is zero, my standard deviation is one. So there's zero and there's one. Two is right here, that's the number in question. Then that probability is this area. We want to figure out how much is all of that area from negative infinity all the way up to two. You can do this. In order to do that, I think you should look at this thing again. 95% of the area is between minus two and two. Can anybody tell me how much area then is outside of bigger than, bigger than two or less than negative two? That's just on one side, but you're right. So big, bigger than two, that's 2.5% of the area. Huh? Less than negative two, that's 2.5% of the area. Because together they add up to 5%, and 5% and 95% is 100. So then we ought to be able to answer this one. That's this one. Yeah. Yeah, good job. So so to be less than negative two, that's just this area. And we just said that that was 2.5% or the number 0.025. Mm -hmm. 
if I go all the way up to positive 2, I would get 0.975. When you take their difference, you're left with just that part in the middle. So if I say the big area minus the smaller area, I would get 95%. You can see it plain as day in this picture. I will put the bigger area in blue, let's say. So all of this area is 0.975. And then in red is this smaller area, which is just 0.025. So when I take the blue area, so you can see how the blue area and the red area, they overlap. But when, when, you, when you start off with the big area, that's like having this number. It's exactly this number. And you deduct away that red portion and you're just left with this part in the middle. One thing that we were counting on here to perform this computation with the curve was symmetrical. So that way each of these tails had an area of 0.025. Let's answer this then. Um, No. To assist yourself, maybe you should make a little sketch and just try to fill out all the pieces that you can. Here in this problem, we're, we're given this. Now, what is, what is this? Area. It's an area. This is an area. And we're trying to construct the event that gives us this area. So I've got my normal curve. This is the Z axis down here. Okay. I don't know where that question mark number is. I'm just gonna put it somewhere. Now, should it be over here? Should it be here? Should it be here? Which way? Over there. Yes. Tell, tell me why. The side is where the negative numbers are. This is the this is the normal curve. So the standard normal curve. So right here in the middle is zero. But how, how do I know that the answer to this isn't a negative number? What about it? It's not negative. Then the area will never be negative. It'll always be between zero and one. You're getting close. This greater than is telling us that I'm going to have some z score, and I will look to the right 
side of that z score and find what the area is to the right of some number. So, so because it says greater than, then, then I know that it's going to be like this, to the right side. Okay. There's a very simple observation that tells us which one of these it would be. It's got to be to the right. And our area here is 0.16. What is that as a percentage? 16%. Okay. So which one's it gonna be and why? The one on the left or the one on the right? It's not because of the sign. It is the one on the right. I'll give you that. But it's not because of the sign. Tell me why it can't be that one over there. Because the shade would be more than 16%. It'd be way more than 16%. That's it. If I if I'm, I'm dealing with the Z axis, so zero is here in the middle. And we said that 50% is on each side of zero. As soon as I move over here and talk about an area to the right of that thing, you're gonna have way more than 50% of the area. And 16 ain't that. So I'm just gonna pick an arbitrary place to put this question mark number. And we're gonna say that there's 16% of the area there. Now the curve is symmetric, right? So over here on the other side of zero, equidistant from zero, I'm going to have minus of that number. And to the left of it would be how much area? It's a positive 16. You still have the 16% because the areas will always be non-negative. Okay, is there any other part of this curve I can fill out? Using stuff you know, is there anything else that can be filled out? The area of the middle section. Is? 68. 68. 0.68%. Okay. We've got this thing all filled out. Empirical rule. Don't we know that number 68? Just like we know 95 and 99.7? So what's question mark? Mm -mm. Question mark can't be 68 because this is our event in here. It's one. This is our event, and if I was saying, what's the probability that some z-score is bigger than or equal to 68, then way out here, way far away, I'd have the number 68. And I'd be curious, how much area is there past 68? The answer would be uh, none, none, zero. Not exactly zero, but it's like 0, 0.0 and like 100 zeros and then a one or something. It's essentially zero. Because in our normal distribution right here with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one, the majority of the observations are happening right here close to zero. And there might be an observation of 68 way out here, but it is so extremely rare that, you know, I might as well have like aliens move in next door to me or something. This is, this would, this, this essentially would never happen. It'd be like living forever. I mean, it might happen to somebody someday 
but it's going to be super a super rare event. So question mark must be one because we have an area of 68% between minus one and one. And according to our little drawing, 16% of the area must be past that number one just by virtue of us having known a handful of things, that the total area under the curve is one, and it's symmetric. So, so we, we knew that past some number we had 16%, so then to the left of the negative of that number, we also had to have 16%. Then we could find out what the area was in the middle, and we recognized this area, 68%. So this must be minus one and one. Do we, un do we understand our notation? probability of an event is an area. Because here's what's going to happen. Uh, people are still going to get them confused. Which one goes where? And if you are always focused on this over here is the area, that will keep you straight. Down here we have the numbers corresponding to the event. Up here are the areas. So, in the homework, they give us, I think, nine questions that are just basic. Um, they don't even have a word problem associated with it. And then I think there's three or four that, that they do have a, a problem associated with it. And those become suddenly harder. And that's only because they just didn't give you a picture. They're not, they're not anything different than what you would have already been doing. So this is what the problems, this is how they'll be looking. Now, we are going to end up using a handy dandy calculator that can tell us what this area is. But you still need to know uh, how they did it in the Stone Age with these tables. I'm just going to show you what a headache it is so you can see why we would prefer to use the calculator. In these tables, they have big charts of numbers. That's all they are, it's a big chart of numbers. And you see my picture up here? This picture is telling me that in this table, I'm gonna find Z scores that are bigger than zero so that I'm getting areas that are bigger than a half. On this left column is the first two digits of the z-score, and then across the top is the third digit. Now, every z-score uh, that we are interested in uh, would be of the form like 1.23 or something. Like that. It's got an integer part and then this two decimals after the, the integer. So you can see right here the z-score of 0, 0.00 has an area to the left of 0. 0.5000, it's half. And it is because of what you see in this table where all of these areas are rounded to four decimal places, then when you go to type in your answers, they're always asking you for four decimal places on the area. And anytime you're giving them a z-score because of the artifacts of this table, we're always giving them a z-score that has two decimal places. So I'll give you a quick, uh, quick example here. So 
the z-score, let's find the z-score uh, 0 0.64. Zero point six four. Well, I'll come right here to the zero point six, and then there's the point oh four part, and at their intersection is this number point seven three eight nine. So then I would know that the area to the left of zero point six four is point seven three eight nine. In other words, the probability that z was less than or equal to 0 0.64 is equal to the area of 0.7389. See how it worked? Okay. Uh, let me answer this question that they gave me with this table, and then we'll pull up the calculator and see that it gives us an even better answer. So here in this problem, they are wanting the area to the left of, I was pretty close, 0 0.65 is what they want here. We just did 0 0.64. So I'll pull back up this table and they want 0 0.65. So there's 0 0.6, here's the 0 0.05. And so this is the number I'm getting that the probability that z is less than or equal to 0 0.65 is the area 0.7422. Now this homework, all, all these problems were calibrated so that you could do them with the table or you can do them with the calculator. So I'm gonna go ahead and type this number in and then we're gonna pull up the calculator. The place where you get it at is you have to go to get more help so that's where stack from is. And then you go to stack from. The stack crunch window opens blank. We didn't open any data in stack crunch. We're just going to use one of its calculators. And you go to stat, calculators, take a guess to which one we're going to use. Stat, calculators. Should I use chi squared, discrete uniform, exponential f, gamma, geometric, log normal, normal, Poisson, T, normal. We're going to end up in this class using, we already used custom, uh, but uh, we're going to be using normal for a little while and then T. And once upon a time, I had studied all those. So, normal. It brings up our normal curve. And you can see the very first question that we answered of the day having to do with area was the area to the left of zero. You can get a quick reminder here of how our notation is working. The probability that some random selection is less than or equal to zero, this forms an event and it is equal to an area, 0.5. The 0.5 corresponding to half of that thing being shaded red. There's five things you can modify here. You can change the inequality. You can change the mean or the standard deviation. You can change the, the value on the axis, or you can type in an area. Here, all I need to do is type 0 0.65. And when I press enter, I'm gonna get the area. And it's a little more precise than the table because it shows more than four decimals, but 0 0.742, and then you got to round the fourth one, you also get two. All right, we 
good on this one. Well, I don't have to keep closing my calculator every time and reopening it, so I will just uh, leave it open. This one they're talking about bone density scores and it just happens to be the case that bone density scores uh, are oriented so that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And here is the picture of what we're trying to figure out. So here I need to find the shaded area. Really all I need to do is make that picture look the same as this one. I'm given the z-score, and I'm supposed to produce the area, find the area of the shaded region. I'll need to change my inequality so that it shades on the other side. And you change it because the z score is a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. See where this z score is at? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the area, the, the, the side on the left side, not shaded. Oh, okay. That's where the numbers that are less than z live. But the numbers bigger than Z are on the right, and that's where it's shaded. So I need to be talking about bigger, Z bigger than minus 0 0.96. Because over because on to the right side of minus 0 0.96, that's where the numbers that are greater than it are at. Yeah. And so I get an area of 0.8315. How are we doing? Back in my day, we had to do this as two problems. You would have to find the area to the left of 1.25, all the way there. And then you'd have to find the area to the left of this other number, and you'd have to take their difference, the bigger one minus the smaller one. It was, solid, it was two problems you had to do. And then you had to do some arithmetic. We have this button. We have this button. I can just click the between button and look at what it gives you by default when you click between. It's an area that's here in the middle and it's between minus one and one. In fact, and in fact, now we see it's not exactly 68 percent, it's it's this, it's 68.2 seven percent it's a little bit more than 68 percent between minus one and one while I'm here why don't I go ahead and put in minus two and two Let's see what's up or I got a better idea come over here to the area box and let's just type 0 0.95 I'm gonna give it an area it's going to tell me the symmetric interval 
that makes that area. And now we can see that 95% doesn't exactly correspond to minus 2 and 2, but it's awfully close. What about 99.7%? Basically, we get minus 3 and 3. So this calculator is very precise. It can be way more accurate than the tables or any rules we have. And it doesn't just do symmetric intervals, no. Um, it will do intervals like this one in this problem where we are given a z-score of minus 0 0.86 up to the z-score of 1.25. And now I learned what this area is. 0.6995. Point six nine nine five. Now this was bone density scores. Was what they I mean they must have had to do some digging to figure out that of all things, the bone density score of uh, was such that they had been normalized to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So if my bones are perfect, I guess my bone density score is a zero. But we'll have 68% of the people that have a bone density score between minus one and one. And probabilistically, I want to express what this area means in terms of, of the probability event. Because just, you know, mathematically, yes, it means the probability that this random observation was between these two numbers. That's the probability of that event occurring. But let's state it in words in terms of a bone density score. So it's really meaning that there is a, I'll round this up to 70%, there's a 70% chance that a randomly selected patient will have a bone density score between minus 0.86 and 1.25. That's our ultimate goal, is to be able to interpret things in that manner, that we have a 70% chance of the randomly selected patient having a bone density score in this interval between minus 0.86 and 1.25. That is where we're headed, where everything we look at will have to be reinterpreted in that way. Here they've given us a picture, um, but the instructions say to find the indicated z-score. Up to now, we had been given the z-scores. And here they're wanting us to find the z-score. Well, just for nostalgia, uh, if I had to do this by hand, or the old-fashioned way, this, this is an area that they've given 0.8944. And my job would be to go through this table and find 0.8944 and then backtrack which z-score belongs to 0.8944. Well, I happen to see 0.8944 right there. <clears throat> so then it would belong to you know, that row and this column, whatever the z-score is right there. But we're not always so lucky to find that area in the table problem was engineered for that to happen. 
the calculator makes it happen like nothing. 0.8944. Of course, I gotta put it on standard. And I'm given the I put in I put in the area this time. And when I hit enter, it gave me the z-score that does it. And I get 1.25. Yep. And I'm confused because so I put it like that and mine was 0.9834 and it comes up with the z-score of Yeah, the picture needs to match the picture that, that they gave you. Is one way to make sure that you're about to get the right answer. Any other questions? I just want to hold my line. Well, what is it? So I have an area of 0.9857. Mm -hmm. And I plug in the area. Mm -hmm. I change the sign. Mm -hmm. So everything is less than. Mm -hmm. um, and I computed it and I got. Is this what you got? <clears throat> can, you, can you go back and show me what you did? I did the wrong thing. Is this what you got? No. Okay. What'd you get? I got point. No. Oh, you know what? I just plugged in the wrong number. Oh, okay. So that's what I did. Get two points. Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell me why? My mind is like Well, look at where my area is at. Look, I have this. This picture is saying ninety-eight point five seven percent of the area to the left of this number. It's a little bit bigger than two, isn't it? Yeah. And that number is actually 2.1889. Okay. And that has to match this picture, which has some z-score here and an area to its left. and we'll take a quick break. So, find the indicated z-score. The graph depicts standard normal distribution. It's going to be, it's going to about, to, it's about to start being important that we look at those details here in a moment. Mean is zero, standard deviation is one. They've given me an area. So I will have to type it into the box for the area. 0.1314. If I click compute, notice how my pictures don't match. Right? I still know what the answer is. The answer is positive 1.12 by symmetry. If I change this inequality though, it won't reflect it around the the, around the median. See how the area is different now? It just kept that same score and said what the area was on the other side. So I have to tell it the area I'm talking about again. And then now I get the positive 
So here's what it would be like when I open the calculator. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe I'm in a big hurry and I just go ahead and type in my number, 0.1314. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it does what I told it to. It said find the z-score that's, that's got that amount of area to its left. But over here, it's, it's an area to the right. Now, if I was on top of my game, I could say, well, the curve is symmetric, so I'll just make this be a, the positive version. And I would have the answer. Because if I just took this whole thing and turned it around like that, well, then it would be the right picture. And all that's gonna happen is the negative numbers become the positive numbers. So I know that my correct answer is positive 1.12 but I won't be able to get it from the calculator as simply as changing this inequality. When I change this, it doesn't keep the area, it keeps the score. So this is the same score, and that's the area that's on the other side of that score. It's just, I mean, this plus that area is one. So what I need to do instead, now that I've changed my inequality, I have to give it the area again, 0.13. And now I have the positive 1.12. All right, we good? All right, let's take a break.
six. The mean is not zero anymore, and the standard deviation is not one. This is not the standard normal curve. And what they're asking me for here, knowing that this is about IQ scores, all it really says, all this picture says is that this area is the probability that a randomly selected adult will have an IQ score less than 85. Whatever that area is, is the probability that a randomly selected adult has an IQ score less than 85. Well, I wonder what the Z score is for 85. observing in 85, I take away the mean, that's the deviation of 85 compared to the standard deviation, then I can get the z-score, which appears to be minus 1. This is just our z-score. Remember we did this last week? So uh, I'm getting a z-score of minus one. So on my standard normal curve, on my standard normal curve, this would be, uh, well, earlier when we worked the problem, it was 16%. Here, it's, we see it's actually 15.86%. I was able to take my observation of 85, find its z-score. I see its z-score is minus one. This just literally means that 85 is one standard deviation below the mean. Standard deviation is 15. 85 plus 15 brings you right to the center, to 100. Now, uh, when I was in school, we would have to find the z-score and then go to the table and find the area. And then now we have this calculator, so we have even one more advantage over the table because we can just type in a mean and standard deviation into the calculator and it will compute the z-score for us and give us the, the corresponding area. So I'm getting 15.87 or 0.1587. If I change my mean and standard deviation to match what I would have used in the computation of that z-score. Then my event won't have a z-value here in the box, it would just have that observed value of 85. And when I put 85 right here and press enter, I'll get the same number. So the area of the shaded regions, 0.1587, and I can interpret that as meaning 
we have a 15.87% chance that a randomly selected adult will have an IQ less than 85. And you can see my 85 will be right there on the, on the axis. There's 80, there's 85. Good. is also about IQ scores. I'm going to get an area between these two IQ scores. Once I find that number, what is it the probability of? Once I find this area, it will be the probability of what? Well, what is this table about? Or what is this, what is this distribution a picture of? It's about IQ scores of adults. Okay. Whatever this area is, is the probability of You said it backwards. You said less than 70 or greater than 105. It's really it's between those two. We can just say between. It's got to be a probability of something happening between 70 and 105, but what is that something? They would have, how would they have figured out that the mean was 100 and standard deviation was 15? They'd take a big sample of who? Of what? Dogs? IQ scores of adults. adults. So each of these numbers are IQ scores of adults. And the probability here, this number, is the likelihood that a randomly selected adult, a randomly selected adult, has an IQ between 70 and 105. A randomly selected adult has an IQ between 70 and 105. You can even state it differently. You can say, well, let's get the number first and then I'll say it. So I'll change this to between. I'll put my numbers, 70, 105. 0.6078. It's about 61%. So then there's two ways that you can view this. You can say there's a 61% chance a randomly selected adult has an IQ between 70 and 105. That was us just talking about one person. Or I can just make a blanket statement about everyone. I can say that 61% of all the adults have an IQ between seven.
What's the probability statement for this? What's the <laughs> about random adults and IQs? 0.75 and X. What would you say? Put it all together. That the I the IQ score will be less than 0.75 adults. You're close, but but is this an IQ score or is this an area? Well, the, the area. This is an area. Yeah. So ultimately, this is the probability. There's a 